Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today this is a fundamental tutorial of geometry nodes in which we're going to talk about some aspects you need to know about the curves. Last time when I'm talking about UV map within geometry nodes, I've discussed that uh, we do not directly provide UV for curves, so you have to create by your own using the curve parameter node. And uh, in 3.1, the curve parameter node has been renamed into spline parameter, but the principle has still been the same, and the issue are also the same. So there will be an issue that you will encounter in both 3.0 and 3.1. It will likely be resolved in 3.2, but it's still it's a kind of workaround. And today, this is mostly to discuss about such kind of aspects. So here we are having an example of this torus. And I put a material, which is basically a brick texture using the UV from, we generated from this spline parameter. Okay, But we can actually see there is some issue with this UV. Like uh, Most likely, it's kind of a nice brick wall, but there are some errors of it. So what's the reason why there is a problem with it? The problem is actually pretty simple. It's a fundamental limitation of this entire method because we're using the spline parameter and the spline parameter is basically going from the start to the end of a curve as 0 to 1. Okay, And for a cyclic curves, here we're having a curved circle, the start end and the end end are the same. So the start and the end are the same. Okay, Which means this particular point is zero, but it's also one. So the computer gets confused and it does not know whether you need a zero or you need a one. And that's why you get this kind of error. So when you work with any kind of cyclic curve, this UV methods will have limitation. This is such a fundamental limitation within geometry nodes due to our way to construct a UV for a curve. It's not a bug and there is no direct solution to resolve this problem. However, there is a workaround proposed in 3.2 in which we're going to turn this cyclic curve into an acyclic one while keeping its shape by having the starting and the end point overlapping to each other. Okay, So this point can be both 0 and 1 because there are two points overlapping to each other. But it's a proposal for 3.2, what if you're using 3.0 and 3.1. Also, up to right now, at the moment I'm recording this video, this proposal hasn't been really completed yet. So it's not being implemented. So how can we actually construct a nice UV for a curve? Okay, Here, I basically use the same principle and I constructed a group nodes, which is called a Reset Spline Cyclic. You can download this for free from the link in the description. It's basically the same principle as the proposal. It's just that you can use this in 3.0, 3.1 before that proposal has been completed. Okay, so here I'm looking at an, a cyclic curve. And if I plug this Reset Cyclic Spline, a uh, Reset Spline Cyclic, then you see there is nothing changed. However, in reality, this node turns the cyclic one into an acyclic one okay, while keeping its shape. Therefore, when you curve to match, you will realize there is actually a gap in between. Okay, This gap is very bad, and uh, to resolve that, you have to turn up this resolution. But on the other hand, with or without these group nodes, increasing the resolution will dissolve this UV problem regardless. So this is not really a perfect proposal, but there is nothing more I can do. Because this is what you will really get in 3.2. And as I mentioned, this is a fundamental limitation how we construct this UV. Okay. On the other hand, this reset cyclic spine actually works great for the second curve, the profile curve, 
in which you do not really see any problem here, even if my resolution is as low as 32. You can even turn this low and you won't see much of the problem. Just to know that uh, if you turn up the light and it goes to render view, so here I have a light. It may not be very obvious here in the material preview mode because there is no lighting, but if you use a vector mask to change this UV, actually you will actually see there is uh, some shading problem. So this is also a limitation with this method, but there is nothing more I can do. And in this particular case, even if you increase the resolution, this shading problem won't disappear. I think this is another known issue, but uh, I don't want to investigate too much of it. Okay. So just to know that this method definitely contains limitation, but uh, I really have no better way to resolve these shading issues uh, in this method. Okay. Uh, this proposal was originally proposed due to the issue of UV, and unfortunately, it does not solve all the issue of UV. But on the other hand, this is still not a not a completely useless node. Previously, in my follow spot tutorial of geometry nodes, I've discussed that a limitation of geometry nodes that you cannot trim a cyclic curve. So right now this is a curved circle again, and I try to trim the curve, there's nothing happens. Okay, This is kind of very important because the gold standard method to, for an object to follow the spline is to use this trim curve method and the end point selection. And the point selection. Okay, So this is the gold standard method because it works for multiple curves uh, compared to the sample curve method. Sample curve method only works for a single one, okay? But uh, we cannot trim a cyclic curve. Uh, however, in this case, if we use this reset spline cyclic, then you can trim it, okay? Uh, by the way, I do understand that this name probably doesn't make sense, but I just want to make the name as uh, uh, similar as the set spline cyclic because this is there will be a new option added for this set spline cyclic, uh, which is called a keep shape, which is doing exactly the same function. And also, if you would like to know how this node is built, you can investigate it by yourself, but it's kind of useless because you will get the options by default in 3.2. Okay. So this is nothing important in the future. Okay. Right now, we are trimming a single curves. So we can go more advanced examples about a follow spot and array that here I'm just basically using a preset to instance a single curve to a random locations. You do not need to worry about this. But uh, because this in internally, this node is using the trim curve method. Okay. So by changing the parameter, there is nothing happening because it's, uh, it's uh, a cyclic curve. So to resolve that, we have to turn that uh, reset spline cyclic. And now you can actually make the object to follow the curves. Okay. And you, if you want to loop that, you just uh, make that into one and so that you can loop infinitely. Okay. So this is kind of idea. And if you would like to array on these curves, then you use another node, which is called array on spline. Okay. So you just use a real spline to replace this follow spline. Uh, in this case, let's just use the curve and the points rotation scale. Okay. And let's decrease the scale. We do not see the kind of array because we need to uh, realize the instance. So now we can actually see this kind of array. And again, we can turn on this loop and you now see this kind of weird array. Okay. Uh, this array on spline node depends on the resolution of our curves. So now if the resolution is too high, then you have a lot of more arrays. So this is how it works. Okay. This is the gold standard method to work with curves. So basically, if you're instancing curves, you have to use these two kinds of methods, which is 
basically trim curves and use endpoint selection. Okay. However, if you really would like to just work with a single spline, of course you can use this sample curve. But if you're instancing, then you cannot use this node. Okay. So here is just a simple node tree about how you uh, follow a single spline. Previously, people asked me that how can I make the sushi uh, rolling on this kind of plate, whatever stuff. And basically, this is the method just for a single object. Uh, if you would like to array on a single spline, then you basically use the index division on this integer and uh, basically play you in with all this kind of number. Uh, if you would like to animate this value, you obviously just uh, add in add the functions so that you can flow. But again, this is sample curve node always only working on a single curve. Uh, just to know that the benefit of this method is it does not care if this is cyclic or non-cyclic once you put a fraction onto it. Okay, if you would like to know, a node, know the details of this node tree, then you can just copy and paste this node tree. Okay. Here, I want to go a little bit back talking about our previous question about UV because every time if you have to build this setup like you have to uh, add a capture attribute node, spline parameter node, it's a lot of tedious work and you also have to add a curve to mesh, curve circles, reset spline cyclic. It's about uh, six nodes, actually seven nodes, okay, seven nodes in total. Okay, it's a lot of nodes and a lot of work it's not a very productive to do. Okay, so that's why I've made a preset, which is basically called the bevel curve. Okay, you basically use one node to replace all these kind of six nodes. Okay, so I delete all these kind of six nodes and just input a single node instead. And it basically completes the functions and it also gives you a UV map. So you just add this UV map and we have to output this UV, which is, you can call whatever you want, but here I will just call it UV. And within material, I'm using this attribute called UV. So everything is basically kind of a tribute. Let's delete this vector mass node. So now we have this kind of beveled curve. You can increase the resolution if you want. And we definitely have the issue we mentioned earlier, that this spline parameter issue. Okay. To resolve that, you just uh, reset a cyclic, then it will resolve all this kind of issue. I didn't put uh, this kind of functionality as a default. The reason is because of the UV issue I previously mentioned with all this kind of lighting. Okay, So maybe you want this kind of a theme, uh, or maybe you do not want. Okay, So this kind of line is, which is visible here. Okay. So just something that you can choose by yourself. Finally, let's go to our last example, which is basically this bevel curve node. Yeah, there's nothing special. It's just another node, which is basically the same as the curve line and the resample curve. Uh, many people are asking, what this curve linear is doing? It's really just a curve line and the resample curve. There's nothing more special. But sometimes the two nodes are really painful to add, especially you have to control the starting and count. It's a, it's a lot of things to worry instead of a group node. Okay. So this is another example. Here it's just a simple setup, a curve line, trim curve, bevel curve, so on and so forth. So now we have all this kind of material preview and everything's running well. But I would like to discuss a little bit uh, about UV generation. Uh, we always said we're using the factor of a spline parameter because it's the only parameter that has been provided in 3.0. In 3.1, obviously, now we have three. Okay. So I would like to discuss a little bit difference of these options okay. and the different kind of use case when they are generating UV. Here, uh, there is a one interesting thing that you need to know that the spawn parameter is basically zero to one. So it's not a respective to lens. Okay. Uh, which means if you trim, then this UV has been compressed. If you do not trim, then it has been stretched. Okay. 
So sometimes this is not really ideal because it does not feel like something is right. In such a kind of case, you can use the length option. Okay. If you would like to enable the length option, then you just uh, put this value into one. Then you're using the length option so that the UV is actually growing with your spot. This is equally true to the deformation. So if we try with a set position and uh, let's combine X, Y, Z, combine the vector, and let's just use a curve parameter, uh, spot parameter, actually, and uh, float curve. So trying to make a a weird shape. And you can realize how the UV has been stretched as well. So you can see the UV is actually growing with this deformation. Sometimes this is not ideal because we're using the lens. So you just uh, use back to the parameter so that uh, the deformation will not actually change this UV. So there are uses different use case for this factor and the length in terms of UV generation and you just use them in your case. Uh, there's another index but I do not think index is very different from factor. Okay, So if you would like to use the index then you just uh, put, put this value as 2 but I really don't think there is any difference compared to factor. Actually now I started the question why do I actually add this option? I forgot. Okay, so just this. Uh, these are different ways to create UV. Okay, uh, but if you're using 3.0, then there's no lens options. So how can you get the lens? There is a spline lens node, which is given the total lens of each spline. So this is the total lens, but this is the lens for every point. Because for example, I have one, two, three, four, five, six points on these curves. So this might be uh, one meter, this might be two meter, three meter, four meter, and so on and so forth. So this is the length within the spline parameter, but the total length is always like six meters in total. So this, so this is true for every point. Okay, so this is the difference between these two nodes. Uh, if you're using 3.0, then you basically use the factor to multiply with the spawn lens node, then you get the, basically the same thing as this lens. Okay. So do you, if you're using 3.0, then you just use this method, or you can just download this preset for free and you solve all the issues. Okay. Uh, the setup will actually be a little bit different, but you should be able to understand the difference of presets version. It should be easily understandable. So basically this is it. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.